This is the foreword to the book titled Golden Enlightenment, 20-Year Anniversary Edition As follows This 20-year anniversary edition of Golden Enlightenment affords me the opportunity to consider the same 50 questions as the 1998 edition with fresh eyes and a deeper understanding and appreciation of spirit truths. It has also given me the opportunity to include an appendix with an additional 10 questions and answers. The intention behind the earlier editions of this book was to provide readers with easy-to-follow answers to the sort of questions that most people ask when they first embark upon the quest for spiritual knowledge. However, this new edition, while also being suitable for beginners, does go further, and information that readers who already have a degree of spirit knowledge may find that it adds to their personal understanding. In my experience, those people who do seek greater spiritual understanding find that such seeking is a never-ending and exciting journey of discovery. It is a journey that inspires and uplifts them. It is also one which enables them to live a more fulfilling and purposeful life, while granting them an inner certainty in their future as eternal souls. I sincerely hope that all readers find plenty of joy during their own, and unique, journeys. Although, I am sure that we all recognize that life on earth can be challenging, to say the least, and that few if anyone enjoys a totally smooth passage throughout life. Yet there are answers as to why this or that happens, and guidelines and advice to help us live more spiritually fulfilling lives. Our lives do have meaning and serve a higher purpose, as every reader, if they did not know this already, will soon discover. The purpose, as will be seen, is for the evolution, the advancement of the soul. The soul that each of us is, is not an illusionary term conjured into earth language by some ancient philosophers. It is real, it is genuine, it is true that each and every one of us is an immortal soul. What is commonly called death is the great illusion. Obviously the physical body cannot function indefinitely, as some may wish. Yet when the time comes to depart physical earth life the soul simply steps free from the body, as though it were removing an overcoat. At this point the soul is totally free to go home to spirit life, or the spirit world. The home of the soul was never this earth. The soul was not born here. It originates from and in and as part of spirit life. It, or at least an aspect or facet of one's soul, journeyed to earth for an adventure, a challenge from which it could learn. This, and more, will all be revealed within the pages of this book. Readers will find that this book is arranged in question and answer style. This makes it easy to find and read, or read again, the answer to any question of particular interest. Each answer is reasonably complete within itself, so some information, being relevant to more than one answer, may be shared more than once. This, hopefully, will help to reassure readers of its relevance, so that the information is not easily forgotten. Indeed, this is something I encourage, that we constantly remind ourselves that we are eternal beings, so that no matter what we face in life, we remember that we will always have a future. It is up to us to make it a bright and beautiful one. Readers who do not know me and have not read any of my other books may, quite rightly, ask who I am to claim that I can answer such questions as contained within this book. As I detailed in another of my books, I can answer by saying that I am a seeker who for decades, from 1981, has researched the world of psychics and mediums, spiritual philosophy, complementary therapies, and all things associated. During this time I have received many evidential messages via mediums from relatives, friends and guides who reside in the spirit world realms. I have witnessed physical phenomena, and seen the faces of mediums transfigured by overshadowing spirit people. I have also witnessed and experienced spirit surgery and healing with positive results forthcoming. I have also received portraits of spirit guides who are my friends and mentors from the spirit realms, 
some with names independently verified by other mediums. Furthermore, with my own eyes, I have seen spirit people and animals on numerous occasions. While I have also heard spirit bells ring in the middle of the night to say hello, and this spirit communication was predicted before it first occurred. I have also sat with mediums in a trance condition and conversed with spirit world guides who have communicated through them. Last but not least I have studied the spirit philosophy and teachings given by many different spirit world communicators and recorded in numerous books. It is because of all that I have experienced that I have no hesitation in sharing the contents of this book and stating that I accept it as truth. However, I am claiming no infallibility, I am not perfect nor a living oracle of wisdom. This is my acceptance of truth expressed in answers. As all the wonderful spirit sages say, take from it only what feels right for you, and of course, we should all do our own thorough research. Readers should be aware that in the greater part of this book I am relating information that is relevant to what can be described as decent people. That is, people we might call good, who on earth have lived reasonably kindly, caring, compassionate, considerate, forgiving, sharing and loving lives. Not necessarily faultless lives, for few if any amongst us can live perfect lives at all times, we all do things here and there that are perhaps a little less than ideal. We all make mistakes. We do things we later regret and wish we had not done or done differently. So, in this book, I am generally and more often referring to the circumstances or consequences awaiting reasonably good people, or better still, really, really good people. Although within, in more specific questions and answers, I have also included information and discussed implications for those who are not, or have not been, reasonably good people, and those who have lived and behaved badly in the extreme. I would briefly like to add a couple of good reasons why reading this or any book that helps to spiritually educate us serves a more specific purpose than simply supplying an intellectual understanding of our spirit life and future conditions. Firstly, Having some spirit or spiritual knowledge and expectation of a spirit life, an afterlife as it often called, is helpful to us when we die. It enables us to more quickly waken or reawaken to spirit life. Whereas, those who lack this understanding, and especially if they earnestly believe that death is the cessation of existence, can cause themselves a great deal of anguish and result in them finding themselves in desperate need of spirit help to awaken them to their new reality. Secondly, others who can cause themselves all sorts of problems when they pass on are fanatical believers in a dogmatic religion. They can effectively cause themselves to go to a reality that limits their progression and places them in an environment surrounded by others of like mind who are far from enlightened as to their potential. Furthermore, they may, and very likely will, completely or partially, cut themselves off from more open-minded family and friends, until they can find it within themselves to become receptive to greater understanding of spirit life and laws the choice in all things is our own to make. Whether we remain closed-minded and in ignorance, or blindly follow a faith-driven belief system, or open-mindedly pursue genuine spirit knowledge, it is all down to us. Happy reading!